What's up YouTube, welcome back to this channel. Today we have another Lead Code SQL 50 question, Lead Code's curated list of top 50 questions to start learning for SQL. This was part of the basic join section of SQL 50. It's called Students in Examination, numbered 1280, and it's marked as easy. I would say it's more of a medium question and it's a good question to learn the differences between the different joins. So if you're interested, let's get into it. All right, so for this question, we have three tables, which is a bit uncommon. We have one called students, one called subjects, and one called examinations. Our task is to write a solution to find the number of times each student attended each exam. Return the result table ordered by student ID and subject name. And we have some result data down there as an example. Now, the thing I want you to pay attention to before getting into the example data is how the question is stated. So a lot of solving interview questions, any sort of technical interview question is pattern recognition. And in this case, there is a pattern in the question, which is very common. Just reading the question carefully, the first part, we should find the number of times each student attended each exam. If you read something like the number or the times, the amount of, the sum, the count, then you're going to have to count up or sum up something. If you have the wording of each per group by, grouped by, then you'll have to group by those columns in order to get the count or sum for those columns. In our case, we have find the number of times, so we'll have to count or sum up, each student attended each exam. So we have to group by student and exam and then do that count. So just reading the question carefully sort of tells you what to do. We also have another input here telling us to order by student ID and subject name. That is something to always look out for. A lot of people forget to filter the output or order by anything. It just makes you come across as careless, not really paying attention to detail. So really read the question carefully, sort of look out for these filters and extra things people want. And also get back to the question statement after coding up your solution to sort of check whether you forgot anything. So just make this a habit and then you'll never forget and actually come across as someone paying attention to detail and being trustworthy with um, data questions. Now, that being said, let's get into the example data. So for students, we have two column, one called student ID, one called student name. For subjects, we have only one column in that table, which is the subject name, which is a string. We have examinations, which has a student ID and subject name, which tells us which student took which subject. So getting into the example data, we would have a student name, first name, their ID. We have a list of subjects, which is just sort of static, the same for everyone. And we have examinations, but we have one entry per exam taken by a specific student. The student is decoded by the student ID only here. And we have an entry for which subject they participated in an exam in. Yeah, so the example output of what we would want is student ID. As I said earlier, we want to count or sum up the amount of exam participation for each student and each subject. So. We have the first part being the student ID. We have another part of the student information being the student name and then the subject name. So for each student and each subject, we want to have the number of attended exams, which in this case for Alice would be three, two and one for math, physics and programming. One thing to look out for is we want to have zero values in the output. And whenever you have zero values in the output, and that is expected, your alarm clock should be ringing and telling you to probably use a left join for this question, especially if you're combining tables and using different information. So yeah, in order to be able to tell that a student participated in zero exams, you will have to join the exam examinations table 
then see that there are no matches for your student and then assign a zero if that is the case. But if you would just be joining that table regularly, you wouldn't even know if you missed out on any matches. I guess you would have to assign zero if there's none, but left join is really the usual way to go there. That being said, I sort of took a lot away from the question already, so let's get into coding the solution up. So I'll start out by going back to the first problem statement, which says find the number of times each student attended each exam. So we'll have to group by the student columns and the exam subject column. So in this case, student ID for each student, for each subject, we want to have some sort of count. Let's just count star for now from the tables we're selecting from. Taking a look at the expected output, we also want to have the student name, not just the student ID. So I'll add that here as well. And we're selecting from students for sure, because students has student ID and student name. It's the only table that has student name. So we'll include it here. We'll have to join, let's sort of restructure this, yeah, from students. We'll have to join the subjects in order to get the list of subjects for every student. Now, these would be the same for each student because, yeah, if you look at the example output, we would have Alice taking math, physics, programming, Bob taking math, physics, programming. Every student has the same subjects or if they wouldn't be participating in a subject, they, I guess they would have zero participation in exams there. We only have one column in, sub in subjects, which is different from everything we have in students. So we can't really join on any column. We don't need to join on any column because this will act as a join that combines every row in the left table with every row in the right table. Left table being students on the left side of that join statement and subjects on the right side. Order doesn't matter here, but it will matter for the left join we're about to bring in. So if we do this, I'll just select star from now, just to sort of showcase what will happen. Every row in students will be combined with every row in <coughs> subjects. So looking at the output, this is our output. We have Alice taking programming, physics and math, and then Bob the same, John and Alex as well. So we have that part of the question down. Let's get back to our selection and join examinations. As I said, we need a left join here just to be able to showcase when a student participated in zero exams, attend zero exams for a given subject. So we're going to left join examinations on students.studentid. This time we need to have a join condition because we don't want to combine every row with every row on the other table. We want to get the amount of examinations per student. So we sort of have to link the students to know which student participated in which exam. That needs to be part of the join condition. So students.studentid should equal examinations dot student ID and this is not enough in this case because we also want to make sure we differentiate between which sort of subject they participated in the exam for so yeah we already have that matching of a student to each subject but if we then went on with the join the way it is we would match every exam participation to every subject of that student. And yeah, basically we would count them multiple times. We only want to count them for the actual subject that we already have in our output. So here for one Alice programming, we only want to match records in the examinations table, which are for Alice and for programming. If we did for any subject, we would overcount and have a higher count here than what we need. Basically, we would have the account of all participations of that student. Yeah, so we'll have to add 
and subjects dot subject name equals examinations dot subject name. Yeah, it's called it has the same name in both tables. So that should do the trick. A thing I often forget, people often forget is adding the group by statement after already like sort of switching to the join section and the select statement being far away. But we're gonna to have to group by the first, the second, and third column, student ID, student name, and subject name in order to get a count per student ID, per student name, and per subject name. Yeah. Now is a good time to consider what we should order by. And going back to the question statement, we should return the result table ordered by student ID and subject name. So we're gonna group by one in descending order, which is our first column in the select statement. That's what one refers to. Two refers to the student name, which is not something we should order by. We already ordered by student ID, so there will only be yeah, that order will already be decided. There's only one value per ID. And then three is the subject name. We'll have several subjects per student. So this one will be ordered as well. The input doesn't say, the question statement doesn't say what order or whether we should order in ascending or descending order. So yeah, let's just take a look at the example output to sort of understand that exams are sort of, wait, what do we order? Student ID and subject name. So it seems like the output is ordered by the attended exams column as well, but it just tells us to order by student ID, which is actually in ascending order. So the smallest value first, student ID, and then subject name, it also seems to be alphabetical, which would also be ascending. Ascending is actually the default, so we wouldn't have to write this here. We could just leave it out. Oh, sorry. I'm in the wrong section anyways. It needs to be order by one, three. I can omit the ascending keyword here because it's the default, but yeah. Maybe that's why they didn't have it as part of the question statement because yeah order by student ID, if I just do this, then it will be in ascending order. Yeah, so maybe I'm being too detail oriented here, but that should give us what we want. Let's try to run it before submitting it. See what we get as output. And yeah, we have one small error here. Student ID in the field list is ambiguous because it appears in several tables. It appears in students and examinations. Let's select students.studentID here. And yeah, that should do the trick. In students, we should always have the student ID. Examinations, yeah, it might be null if they're not participating, but yeah. We have the same problem for subject name, actually. I should have seen this coming. We also have it in subjects and subject name. When in doubt, I always select from the left tables, which are not on the right side of the left join and wouldn't be null values, but yeah, should be fine anyways. So we get the wrong answer just because I didn't name the count as expected. It should be called attended exams, but otherwise this is looking pretty good. I think our count will still omit zero values. So if we take an actual look at the output, I get one values instead of the zero values for the subjects where students had no participations. Let's take a look at what happens if I select star here to sort of showcase what happens. Yeah, so what happens here is our output has now values for student ID and subject name, but I was counting star, which would just be every entry in the output. I need to count one of the columns that has null when there is no match with the examinations table in order to be able to count when there has been no match. 
So if I count subject name or sub or student ID in examinations instead, then I will get the actual number of exam participations. So yeah, I still had count star as sort of a placeholder, but in this case, if you have a left join and some of the columns are null, but not all of the columns, you'll have to be careful to actually have a column that can be null in your count function. Yeah, so this is the accepted solution. Let's submit it. As you can probably tell, this question has turned out to be a bit more complicated than expected as it was marked as easy. So don't underestimate these questions. Just re read the problem statement carefully. Do that pattern recognition matching technique that I mentioned. Check the output after you finish coding up. I was really careful while coding it up, but going back, yeah, we have the accept solution. We did order by student ID and subject name. There has been nothing else. And yeah, as I mentioned, this is a good question to sort of understand the differences between a normal join and a left join, a normal join without a join condition, which just matches everything to everything, which is not used that often. And yeah, also making sure to select or to count up columns that can be now grouped by the right columns, some ordering as well. So this is a really good question to get into. Makes sense that it is part of SQL 50. Give this one a try. I'll leave a link to this in the description below. And apart from that, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.